Dear children, welcome to T for Tuition online classes for social science class 8. I am Banumati. In today's demo video, we would deal with an interesting and important chapter in geography. Chapter 5, Industries from your textbook. Now children, let me ask you a question, a quick question. When you think of geography, what strikes your mind? Memorizing capitals and maps? That's not all geography is. There's more to geography than we think. Geography is a study of humans and space throughout time and how spaces have shaped history. It's a fascinating field of study and important too. All right. It's interesting, agreed, but why is it important to study the subject? Here's why. Let's find out. The major gain in studying geography is the gain of knowledge about places, human connection, becoming a global citizen, spatially aware, global interdependence, which means the connections between countries and how we mutually depend upon each other. Awareness of the presence of the global community, which leads to becoming a global citizen. In short, it is a subject that teaches to make connections across boundaries. Having said this, let's understand the importance of industries in our society, country and the world, which means in our geography around us. Before we begin exploring industries, what does this term industries mean? Industry refers to an economic activity that is concerned with the production of goods, extraction of minerals or provision of services. Production of goods means manufacturing products, extraction means unearthing or mining metals or minerals, provision of services means rendering services like your hospitality industry, your hotel industry, hospitals, tourism industry, education industry, and so forth so on and so forth and how are these industries classified industries are classified based on their raw materials they use the size of the industry and the ownership the major three dividing factors for classifying industries are raw materials based industries and these industries may be agro based they could be further divided into agro based marine based forest based agro-based, marine-based or forest-based. Now, how many of you all enjoy Maggie, Kit Kat and Munch chocolate? I hope most of us do, right? These products, Maggie, Kit Kat and Munch are produced by Nestle India, which is one of the largest contributor for India's GDP, Gross Domestic Product. All right. This is a major term in economics and let's not venture into that. Let's look at geography. So this company, you should have heard about Nestle and you should have seen Nestle's ads, right? Nescafe, Nestle, all that. Nescafe is again a product of Nestle. All right. So these products are produced by Nestle India. Most of our biscuits, all our biscuits, in fact, noodles, cheese, milk, spaghetti, paneer and ghee come from this food processing industry. When I say food processing industry, I'm not just referring to Nestle alone. I'm talking about the other companies that are located, that are present in India as well. Okay, and these companies form the food processing industry, which is a major sector in the agro-based industries classification group. The other agro-based industries are textiles, dresses, clothes. Okay, agro-based industries are textiles milk products dairy products and leather products now i suggest think of other products that are made from leather other than your car seats what what covered strikes your mind don't tell me bike seats okay what are the other products let me ask you a question a quick question what are the other products that are made out of leather in addition to car seats now, these industry, the leather manufacturing industry is again a major classification in the agro-based industry, which again falls under industries 
that are classified for raw materials. So like, I, like we discussed earlier, industries are classified based on their raw materials, size and ownership. An agro-based industry is a major sector under raw materials classification. Okay. All right. Now, when your mom packs lunch for you, what does she do? She packs it in your tiffin box, of course. But sometimes when she has to pack rotis or sandwiches, she uses a thin paper, a glistening, shining paper, right? Have you wondered what it is? Yeah, you're right. I heard you. Yes, that is called an aluminum foil. These aluminum foil wrappers are used as lunch packing material, right? Or copper cookware in the kitchen. You must have noticed these copper bottom milk, uh, milk boiler, copper bottom cookers. All these uh, in your aquaguard, the copper bottomed, the copper aquaguard, you should have seen and noticed in your kitchen. Copper becomes a regular wear. Nowadays, it's used your copper water bottles. Yes, right. So in most cases, copper has become a part of our daily lives. Now, have you ever wondered from where do we get this copper? Yes, of course, from the shops. From where do these shops procure this copper? They get it from a wholesale dealer. And who gives it to the wholesale dealer? The copper mining industries. All right. And you must have noticed the zinc tablets. These days for COVID, they suggest doctors prescribe zinc and vitamin C tablets to be consumed on a daily basis to increase immunity. You must have heard about that. But have you ever wondered where do we get these zinc tablets? Of course, from the medical shop, the pharmacy. But how does it land in the pharmacy or the medical shop? Who gives it to them? The zinc manufacturing companies. All right. And from where do they get it? Of course, from the land, from the soil. They extract zinc and copper, aluminum, all right, iron and crude steel. These are the major minerals that are extracted, that are unearthed. Okay. And uh, these industries together are called as mineral based industries and they again form a major sector under the raw materials classification of industries did you know that india was the third largest producer of coal and the fourth largest producer of iron ore in the world last year did you know that if not now you've come to know good then you have the marine based industry which is a third type under the raw materials classification. Take a closer look at the slide which portrays the division of industries. Whether your cod liver oil, your seven seas cod liver oil capsules we use or the seafood that is used as a primary source of food by many are produced by this industry, the marine based industry. I'm sure you know marine means related to sea. Lastly, the forest based industries, honey, your daba honey, you must have and how many of you like to have your sandwiches, your buttered bread with honey? I do that. That's the reason I asked you. Okay, your honey, paper, wood, that's timber. These products are produced by forest based industries. All right, example, your daba honey. The second now coming to the, this is about the raw materials classification, the major classification in industries. The second major classification of industries is done based on size. Industries are broadly classified into large scale and small scale industries. Cottage or household industries are classified into small scale industries in which the capital invested and the volume of production is lesser when compared to a large scale industry for example under small scale industries we could have basket weaving pottery making food processing silk weaving are categorized into small scale industries whereas production of automobiles heavy machinery are brought under large scale industries you can it's clear right because small scale the size is small large scale the size is large whether the capital invested, the raw materials used, the production, the output they give are all comparatively different. For small scale industries, the output, the input is small and the output is also smaller. For large scale, the size of the output product is also large. Of course, a car is larger than a sari. 
a silk dress or a dairy product all right as well as the investment the amount of money that goes into the capital is also comparatively different for a large scale industry it's much comparatively larger for a small scale industry like basket weaving or pottery making or food processing the capital invested is comparatively smaller all right this means nestle's production of kit kat maggi and amul butter would be considered still considered as small scale industries whereas manufacturing of bmw cars or ashok leyland's trucks would be considered as large scale industries the last category of industries would be based on ownership who owns the industry isn't it that is isn't, isn't that an important question yes so industries can be classified into private private means owned by in one individual or a group of individuals persons or it could be a public sector unit a public sector industry which means owned by the government yes you're right or it could be a joint sector a joint sector a combination of private as well as the public okay the joint sector industry or the cooperative types all right the cooperative industry public sector industries like i told you are those operated by the government such as example the best examples could be hindustan aeronautics aeronautics limited and steel authority of india limited joint sector industries are combined are blended and combined and owned by owned and operated by government and by one or more individuals a combination of government and private sector industries are called the joint sector industries for example the best example would be maruti udyog limited this company you know very well your maruti cars they are manufactured by the maruti udyog limited cooperative industries are owned and operated by the producer and suppliers of raw materials that is if a certain person or a group of people supply raw materials or produce raw materials to run that industry for the operation of the industry they themselves own the industry as a collective whole for example the best example would for this would be amul anand milk union limited and sudha dairy all right you know very well anand milk union limited is located in anand gujarat now what do you think are the contributing factors for the success of an industry before we answer that question what factors do we list before settling down in a new house for instance you need to find a new house a rented house what are the questions what are the parameters or what are the factors we bear in mind before looking for a house we see if grocery stores and vegetable markets are nearby schools and hospitals are nearby if the house has non stop power and water supply if it is connected with power public transportation or are ola and uber cabs easily available reachable accessible to the to that house are the roads inlets you uh, know say perfect are the roads you know pop properly laid are they safe is that a safe neighborhood all right if you could get and your mom's worry would be if you if she could get maids for working on a daily basis isn't it to do household chores isn't it so we have all these factors in mind before we locate a simple rented house for a small family imagine an industry a huge factory is to be built of course they need profit right if they have to construct an industry and they operate it at the end of the day they need to see success profit so there are several factors that one has to keep in mind that that to be borne in mind when finding out the location of an industry what are those contributing factors the availability of raw material for example a dairy factory say for example a dairy milk factory your um, amul butter i'm sorry your amul factory has to be constructed all right so of course it should be quite, it should be easily accessible and it should be located in such a way where they have an easy access to milk okay milk is a main source of raw material the second is power whether the industry has the factory is going to be supported with non stop power supply thirdly capital money fourthly the land the space the geographic the area the space 
is you know easily accommodative and it is easily approachable by other major uh, is it easily approachable to uh, land transport to seaport to airport so that the output the output is easily distributed to wholesalers and other retail markets so road how is the location how is it connected towards transportation this is one of the major significant contributing factor while deciding the success of an industry the location all right and then is labor people to work in the industry labor is it easily available and how close the proximity towards the market so if these factors are easily available the industry thrives as well at times the government provides incentives to motivate industry founders like you know low rated power for example if they want if the government wants a certain area a certain village to develop okay to flourish for the people in the village for poor people in the village for a village for low low people low income group people living in the village with no employment to flourish to get a job for their economic condition to improve for their lives to become better the government decides and gives motivation it gives a lot of incentives for founders for company owners for industry owners to begin industries in those areas which you know which are not actually cities which are uh, small villages why would they do that why does a government do so that people get get benefit of course the government is interested in the benefit in the lives of its people in the welfare of its people so what are the government incentives that are provided to those industry owners to start a company or an industry in a um, not so popular area in a village what are those uh, motivate what are those incentives low rated power the government collects the electricity bill tariff right so it reduces the tariff amount collected you know very well the domestic tariff the current that we use in, in our houses and the current that we use that is used in industry are comparatively differently rated okay the tariff the price that we provide that we pay for our current the current that we use in our houses is rather very less comparatively lesser than the amount paid by industry owners to the government and that is called a commercial basis you know electricity charged on commercial basis so what does government do now coming back to the point in order to motivate industry owners to begin industries in um, low lying areas in uh, villages which are not so popular they reduce they bring down the the current charge the electricity bill charge that they charge from these industry owners they don't give it free of charge completely but they reduce the tariff the electricity bill rate is comparatively lesser than the others so this is a kind of a motivation and incentive to encourage founders to begin industries in villages number 1 the second is subsidized transport again their transportation tax is also reduced and uh, the transportation the fuel that they provide that is being given to them for transportation is also available at a reduced rate and other infrastructural support like proper roads and uh, proper water supply is being provided to them all these factors are supported by the government to encourage founders of industries to begin industries in villages in the rural areas of india so that backward communities and people who are downtrodden poor people can benefit can get a job in these factories and their lives would improve and flourish all right now let's look at the major industrial areas across the world the major industrial areas of the world are north america western and central europe eastern europe and eastern asia these areas are marked in the world map provided and this uh, when we talk about uh, these mineral industries raw material based industries the size and ownership there's one more important industry that we need to mention which is the information technology and technology industries in short the it industry you must have heard about the it people right 
and what is significant about them they fall under the category service based industries all right this is another major classification and most of these in the it industries as you find are, are you know they con they concentrated in karnataka in the deccan plateau especially in bangalore and hyderabad that is the reason bangalore is called bangalore means today's bengaluru is called as the silicon plateau of india as we see the world map in the slide they it depicts the industrial regions of the world okay now let's look at few important questions and repeated questions from this chapter children define industry and i've provided the answers there in the slide named three common methods of classifying industry expand the abbreviations amul i have given you all these answers in my pre previously the during the lecture so if you listen to the video you would get the answers and why is bengaluru called as silicon plateau yes bengaluru is called the silicon plateau because silicon is used to make computer chips and computer chip is an essential raw material with which computer components a cpu is made as the it industry is based on computers and computers and cpu forms an integral part of the computer the central processing unit so that is made out of these computer chips and computer chips are made in turn made out of silicon all right so um, so thus bang bengaluru is located is called as the silicon plateau it just signifies computers that are cons computers and computer based it industries that are concentrated in bengaluru what is the major influence of the Uh, the, uh, what is a major influence that location can have on an industry the location of an industry is affected by their uh, by the availability of raw material land water labor power capital transport and market so then you have what are the similarities between the information technology industry in bengaluru and the information technology industry the it industry in california so this is one important question that we need to understand and address we need to know this question the answer to this question as well the similarities between the information technology industry in bengaluru and silicon valley in california is that bengaluru is located in the deccan plateau silicon valley santa clara valley is located next to the rocky mountains both have clean environment so this is a similarity there is mild climate throughout the year it's pleasant weather and it's close to educational scientific and technological centers close to major roads and airports good access to markets and skilled labor skilled workforce is available and the low rents and low cost of living is yet another similarity between bengaluru and california all right so this is a major sim, uh, this is a major so these are the major similarities and differences between bengaluru and california and both are called as silicon one is called as silicon plateau bengaluru is called the silicon plateau whereas california whereas santa clara valley the silicon valley is called as silicon valley and not silicon plateau so that's a difference all right okay now i haven't completed the i have haven't dealt with a complete chapter i've just covered till uh, the important locations uh, locations across the world where industries are found all right so there is more to complete and i've discussed few important questions but i would be really happy to help you if you join the original classes so that we could discuss it lessons in detail address more important questions look at maps and develop a knowledge about industry so that writing exam becomes as smooth as easy and breezy all right 